Dinosaurs are weird. That is to say, they look pretty different from animals that live today. I would go so far as to say that animals today that look like dinosaurs look weird. But imagine a dinosaur so weird that it manages to stand out among the dinosaurs, a group of quite weird creatures. Let's take a look at some basal dinosaurs. Here's the Eoraptor, the most normal looking dinosaur in existence. Probably because it's one of the earliest dinosaurs found in the geologic record. A few years later and we have Herrerasaurus, a similarly normal dinosaur, but a bit bigger. It is another remarkably normal dinosaur. If I were six years old with a green crayon and you told me to draw a cool dinosaur, I would probably put a Herrerasaurus looking thing down on that construction paper. What would Little Dead Alive in HD put down on that paper if you told him to draw a weird dinosaur? 165 million years of evolution brought some of the most incredible creatures ever to walk the planet, yet also some of the strangest. Here are our top picks for the weirdest and most unique dinosaurs in no particular order. This video idea was suggested by Dianimations on our Discord server. If you want your idea to become a video, share your art, or chat with other like-minded people, join the Dino Nerd Club. The link is in the description and comments sections. Help us get to 1,000 members, we're almost there and our 1,000th member will get a special tag on the server. Only for users 13 years of age or older, as per the Discord TOS. To begin, we have Chinjousaurus. Nicknamed the Pinocchio Rex, Chinjousaurus was a medium-sized tyrannosaurid found in China. It gets its name from its elongated snout, a characteristic that is associated with Aeliorhamini, the tribe that Chinjousaurus is classified under. This thinner and longer snout may be evidence that Pinocchio Rex hunted small, swift prey like lizards or small dinosaurs, allowing the dinosaur to maneuver quickly and reach in restricted areas. You can't get away from this guy. This could have allowed them to avoid competition with other Tyrannosaurids and live their lives as long-snouted dudes. Next up, Carnotaurus. One of the more popular entries on this list, Carnotaurus is most notable for its two horns above its eyes, the bulldog-like snout, and its incredibly stubby little arms. Its overall body shape is similar to most Ablosaurids, being a light-built biped, possessing arms that were possibly vestigial, though some scientists have suggested that the arms were in fact used for mating rituals. The horns may have been used similar to how goats use their horns. Males bash their heads together in violent rituals to establish dominance over the other males. Some scientists have also proposed the idea of the horns being used to protect their eyes while hunting prey. If I had the choice of being a dinosaur with or without horns, you'd bet I'd choose to have them. They're pretty cool, and you never know when you might catch a stray club to the face. To continue, we have Amargosaurus. Amargosaurus lived in modern-day Argentina, being most notable for its parallel rows of spines running down its neck and back. Amargosaurus is a smaller sauropod, being around 30 feet in length and 9 feet tall. The spines were thought to have been used to defend against predators. However, a more recent theory is that the spines supported a sail of sorts, with skin bridging their gaps. This sail could have been used as a display to attract mates or to deter rivals, and some have even suggested that they were used to support a hump or part of the respiratory system. This topic is still debated, as with most things in dinosaurs, but one thing is certain, a margosaurus is one weird sauropod. Next up, Concave Venator. Concave Venator was a fairly small carcodontosaurid from Spain. It was around 19 feet long and about 6 feet tall, donning a short sail on its back. While this is not confirmed, scientists speculate that this structure may have been used for fat storage, in the form of a hump, or for some sort of color-related communication. Concave Venator likely had feathers indicated by the quill knobs on its ulna, which is unusual for Carcodontosauridae. However, there is some debate as to whether these quill knobs are actually muscle attachments. Skin impressions from the Concave Venator indicate that scales were present on the tail and legs. All of these features together create a creature that has always stuck out in my mind as being a peculiar dinosaur. And now we have Cosmoceratops. Discovered in Utah, Cosmoceratops was a 15 feet long ceratopsid belonging to the Chasmosaurini subfamily. This dinosaur is unique due to its 15 horns and spikes ornamented on its frill, earning it the nickname, the horniest dinosaur ever. You can't make this stuff up. Ten horns are adorned on its frill, two above each eye and one nasal horn. The ornamented frill was likely used for attracting mates, similar to peacocks today. There were only two known specimens of Cosmoceratops, both of which are located at the Natural History Museum in Utah. I've got my eyes on you, Cosmoceratops. To continue, we have Shunosaurus. Shunosaurus was a sauropod found in modern-day China and was estimated to be around 31 feet in length. This is relatively small when you think of sauropods, but the weirdness starts when you take a look at its stubby neck. Well, to be fair, it's still a pretty long neck, but when you compare it to Argentinosaurus, you know what, size doesn't matter, it's just how you use it, the neck, of course. It has the second shortest of any sauropod. Although its neck length is unusual, the most unique feature of the dinosaur was, in fact, its club tail, similar to those of ankylosaurs. Must be compensating for something. Similar to ankylosaurs, the club was likely used as a defensive weapon. Probably blew the knees out of longer-necked sauropods or something, I don't know. 
Next up, Mononychus. Mononychus was a small, 3 to 4 foot long alvarosaurid that lived in the Gobi Desert. It likely fed on termites in their mounds, evidenced by its long snout and its one digit large claws, hence the name Mononychus. The claws were reduced to a short but sizable claw that they could use to tear open termite mounds, like how anteaters do today. I always love to see conversion evolution, truly remarkable. To continue, we have Therizinosaurus. Another quite famous dinosaur on this list, Therizinosaurus, was very unique not only due to its remarkable size, 13 feet long and 15 feet tall, and its ridiculously large claws, but because it evolved from a theropod. This is crazy because Therizinosaurus made an insane switch in its lifestyle as compared to other theropods, becoming mostly if not completely herbivorous, although it could have consumed insects on occasion. It sounds pretty trendy if you ask me. I'm sure those claws were an excellent defense, if not deterrent, from large predatory dinosaurs. You go, Therizinosaurus. Be the change that you want to see in the world. The final weirdo on our list, Stegeros. Stegeros was a genus of Ankylosaur that lived in southern Chile. The tail of this thyreophoran consists of seven flattened osteoderms that cover the tail to form a weapon similar to an Aztec mace. Of course, this was used as a defensive weapon, but the only bones this little guy will be breaking are your shins. This guy was the Razor Scooter of the late Cretaceous. Hey, wait a minute. Could Stegeros be responsible for Sue's leg injury? Maybe this little dude traveled all the way from Chile to North America to whack Sue in the shin, just so some hominids can make an obscure but relatable meme about it 65 million years later. Out of the hundreds of known dinosaur species out there, this was just our list of some of the weirdest. Let me know which ones we missed in the comments section, and if you liked the video, feel free to like and subscribe. As always, thank you for watching. Remember to keep an open mind, and I'll see you next time.